But as far as competition, yeah. I don't think that's competition because the, the beauty in music is is everybody can be number one. You know, I can be number one this week. The next week, somebody else can come in. I really think like Apple Music, I'll be number one for this hour. And then two hours later, you could be number one. So it's like yeah. it's, a, it's a shared space at the top. You know what I mean? It's not it's not a space where only one person can be number one. So that's how I kind of look at it with, with my other executives that are that are at the top of me. It's like, I'm going to help make sure you get yours. You know what I mean? Because to the truth of the matter is, you can be number one for one minute, get that screenshot, and that's all you need. Hey, that's the truth. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Right. So so for me, <laughs> with my friends, like I want to just make sure they reach that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not involved. You my boy. You, I got to help you. You got you to gotta touch that number one. So it's not a competition in, in that sense. But as far as being oversaturated, um, very much so. And, and I just feel like, man, just like kind of like I care about who the president is, but at the end of the day, I got to make a shake for me. And so that's kind of how I feel about it being oversaturated. I care about it, but I got to make a shake for me. I got to find a way. Right. You know what I mean? So that's how I move with it. That makes a lot of sense. And the way you make it shake today. Yeah. Is the point that you said you made. I think your sent me the video and I was like, yeah, man, we've been talking about the same thing. Having your own media company. Mm -hmm. as yeah. An yeah. How, how do you look at an artist having their own media company? What do you say? Because I know what I think. Right. Well, I mean, first of all, you have to recognize that you, you need that media. You know what I mean? Like the, all music discovery. Well, not all. I can't say all, but majority of music discovery is through content. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you have to recognize that that's the only way or well, the best possible way you'll be discovered and the most likely way you'll be discovered. So once you recognize that, then it's like, how do I keep up with the demand of putting out X amount of pieces of content a day? Mm. Well, that's why it's called a business or a company, because now it's more than just you. Yeah, You have to put together that team that understands content. And what I learned from you, that team that knows how to speak the language of TikTok, because yeah. that's the language being speaking, spoken in content right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have to understand that I need a team that understands this yeah. to help me execute that mission. But with artists, they, they still have to, in, in all things in their business, they still have to be the visionary and the leader in that. You know what I mean? Because even if I hire two people to help me make content, they can't make me get out of bed and turn on the camera. You know what I mean? They, they, they can't make me sit back and think of the ways to deliver this message. They can help and they give me ideas and they maybe can show up with the camera when I allow them to. But at the end of the day, if I'm not the person that's the, the most gun ho about this, it's not going to get done. It's not going to be successful. So first, you have to be the number one and then you build a team around. You have to be Michael Jordan. Then you had to go find your Scotty. You had to go find your Dennis and you have to build that media team. Just like when I started NPR, I knew this already. So I didn't hire an A&R team. I hired a content team. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I hired. I said, okay, I need to find people who understand content. So I hired that team and we signed money long. And then five months later, we were number one because we understood content. You want to move streams, you need content. And we understood that best. And, and, but now, you know, here we are two years later, everybody has followed that blueprint. And so now you have this flooding. And so now it's like, okay, they flooded what, what we were doing great. So we have to find another way to be great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that, that way is too oversaturated. Yeah. And so that's that's what we're in the midst of doing with a Manny Wells and with Amari Amar Noel. We're in the midst of changing what it looks like to be great in order to succeed. Because our old method is, is flooded already. On August 12th, myself, Sean, and Jared McKee will be hosting a live event in Atlanta where we'll be sharing some of our best marketing, branding, and content strategies that we haven't really been able to put out anywhere else. So if you want a reason to come to Atlanta, or if you're in Atlanta, or if you just want to dap us up and see if we're real, go and get your tickets at nolabelsnecessary.com or check the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. We're only doing 60 tickets, like a hard 60 tickets, so you want to make sure that you're one of those 60. Once again, nolabelsnecessary.com or check the link in the description, and we'll see you there. But I'll give the game away since we own <laughs> No Labels Necessary. <laughs> I believe what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find ways to create experiences. You know what I mean? Nice. You're going to have to find ways to create experiences. And then from that experience, the content will be able to break through on the Internet. Mm -hmm. But you have to create these experiences because everybody's on the Internet. But the artists that can come to my hometown or or while I'm out at their hometown, or whatever the case may be, the artists that can connect with me in a different way besides the Internet is going to be the artist that's going to flourish the most. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I can like 10 artists on the Internet. But the one person that was that was in my crib. Oh, no, I love him. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? And so you have to find a way to create these experiences. And of course, you have to document those experiences and put that content online because yeah. that experience will reach that one person. But the way that 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 feeling comes across the screen will reach millions. You know what I mean? For example, Manny Wells going home to for the first time in Nigeria. Yep. You know what I mean? The the him showing the experience of connecting with his father at 14 years. Although you not him and you not his father, you feel it. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Connected with him in a different way. It, yep. Exactly. I, I know Manny for a while. When yeah. I saw that video. That's just different. It's just, it's different. just different. And so, and so, how do I create those experiences mm-hmm. more often to be able to connect way larger on the internet? Yep. You know what I mean? And so that's that's what we're in the process of, of figuring out for Manny and for Amari, that, and that's how we're going to break them and take them to the top. It's great, man, because like hearing you talk is like there's always things that we're on the same page with. I be waiting for something that we can argue about, <laughs> but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. But like, because we even say. The way fans see you treating other fans, mm-hmm. they almost appreciate it as if it was them, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yes. like showing, like you said, the, these real world experiences. If I did this with a fan, or like this happened in this private event that we had with the fans, like we had right. an artist who's doing this real dope private event, and she was able, able to sell out with seventy five tickets for hundred dollars. That's right? dope. On That's dope. Five cat room, right? And she's already gearing up to do another one. Yeah, like nothing, right? And the way that's going to connect and have to be shown back on exactly. it's, it's, it's all the same thing. And I think that leads to something, I guess, what's required on, on that side, right? In terms of doing an event well, in your opinion. Um, I mean, again, this, this process, I want to call it new to me, but I, I'm... I'm trial and error in this process, and mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm still learning. I haven't, yeah, I, yeah. I don't have this mastered yet, um, but but I think at the end of the day, um, you you it has to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't want to say small. Mm-hmm. It has to be limited. It has to be. Right. Yep. It has to be. Uh, it's a it's a word I'm looking personal, for. Personal. Well, it has to be personal. It has to be intimate for sure. Exclusive. But like, um, what's the word when like the quantity is small? Uh, I can't think of a word. I just lost on me. Mm. Um, but anyway, yeah. let's just let's just stick with small and intimate. It has it has to be that because it has to be personal. Yep. You know what I mean? So so that's number one. It's like I feel like it has to be personal. Like every person there has to feel a much deeper connection with you than they would if they were at a concert with three thousand people. Yep. You know what I mean? Because again, you looking for that feeling to come across on camera because it's still about content at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that that feeling has to be different than the feeling of three thousand people. You know what I mean? So I I think that's that's the first part. It's just those intimate experiences. Um and then after that, it's just like it's just you you gotta make a connection with those people that are there because those are gonna be, you know, kinda like your bullhorns. Mm-hmm. Like that every every out of those seventy five people, every single one of them, I promise you they're gonna talk to ten, twenty people about you. That's right. You know what I mean? And so that's how your your fan base spreads. You know what I mean? So you just gotta make make sure they they feel like this experience was amazing and they got to connect with the artist. Because I, I think what's gonna end up happening is instead of having, you know, two or three just super dominant superstars, everybody's gonna have their own space. You know what I mean? So as a as a young fan, as a twelve year or let's go or as a fifteen year old, I'm gonna have two or three artists that I really love that most people would have never heard of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so and so that's gonna be the way that um, consumers experience music. In my opinion, moving forward, they're gonna have their their people that they love that everybody else isn't up on, and that's fine because I done been to this person where there's only us and fifty people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like this is my guy. This is my girl. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how fans are going to feel about their people, um, about their uh, their artists. So I think that's so, more or less where we're headed to, where everybody will be able to have their own thing versus all of us loving Beyonce. Yeah. yeah. And and by the way, I'm not saying we will love Beyonce forever, but was, <laughs> the point I'm making is it's going to be you have your people versus everybody loving one person. Yeah, it ain't going to be that many new Beyonce. That's, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. the space has been created because if you look at technology, how – Right. First, it allowed us to connect with people in other places. Then it got to a point where, you know, we got detached and then mm-hmm. you had working from home. So you have these people that don't have a way to connect and create community in the same way. It was just natural without us thinking about it growing up. Right? Yeah. So you have generations that are looking for people to connect to. And a lot of them are doing it through their artists. And yeah. when you add these events and create community around yourself. Like that, that's why I was. Talking about this is part of what we were arguing about between Russ, <laughs> Russ versus Russell. 
Oh, you're not gonna let that go. I'm not gonna let it bro, go. I was trolling you, but I meant to tell you hey, that too. Hey, it doesn't matter. Bro. It, was, it, was, it was great for the content. So you gotta you gotta hold you gotta hold the position on going forward. Yeah, you gotta stand on it. That's what they say you gotta stand on it. Hey, but but so there's a difference between having a very strong fan base. You can have a very, very, very strong fan base and be successful as an artist versus having a community, right? Mm-hmm. And the community are also going to be fans, but they're not a community. The community requires the fans to actually connect and interact with each yeah. other, have a certain set of values. Right? right. All Drake fans don't necessarily have the same values. Like, you know what I mean? But right, I get you. Russell, you can probably identify what they look like. J. Cole has a bit of probably a community of a going community. for you, right? You kind of know like who his well, fan base is. You can look yeah. at him, he a J. Cole fan. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? You know, you yeah. go to Dream Little Fest and it's like they all kind of look like they in the same There's category. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So no, that's what they call J. Cole backpack rapper. So they, yeah, I new get it. New age backpack yeah. rapper for sure. Yeah. So like that's what the, what you get the opportunity to do at these private type events. Or yeah. I don't want to say private. You build a you know, community. Whatever yeah. those type of events are. And you can yeah. still sell to people at these events, right? Yeah, so it's, it's a great. And because cycle. it's a smaller community um, that that are accustomed to supporting you, they'll support you with much larger numbers. Mm-hmm. So I'm not selling these shows for twenty dollars tickets. Nope. You know what I'm saying? I'm selling, like you said, for a hundred dollars. I'm selling mm-hmm. them for much more because this is a small community that that you know appreciates me much more than they appreciate somebody that they just seen online. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it, you're actually able to make more revenue doing it this way, keeping it keeping it small, keeping it limited. Yeah. yeah, what I think yeah. is interesting too is like fans have kind of been asking for that for years, right? Like you yeah. always see fans say like, "Man, like I'm trying to gatekeep you, right? I'm trying to I'm trying yeah. to keep you just to me." And it feels like now they've come to the realization like, "Oh, there's a price for that." Right? Yeah, and that price isn't going to be cheap. But to your yeah. point, I would much rather pay a hundred dollars to be able to dap up my favorite artist than right versus three hundred just to see Drake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, from, from exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, I think it's the times we are moving into are are beautiful. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be an amazing time, an amazing atmosphere, and artists are gonna be able to eat. You know, yeah. finally. You know what I mean? Like every every artist that is able to create a, a community is going to be able to do well. 